Let's talk some chess. Today we'll analyze the final matchup between two legends of the game, Jose Raul Capablanca and Mikhail Bafanik. This game was played in 1938, so Capablanca had already won the Chess World Championship. Uh, Bafanik would eventually become the world champion, although he didn't know it at the time. Uh, this game is important, though, because it was the last time that these two players actually faced each other over the chessboard uh, before Capablanca's death in 1942. So a very important game in the context of chess history and just generally an awesome game to analyze. Uh, let's get right into it. Bafanik opens us up with a D4. We have Knight to f6 by uh, Capablanca, c4, e6, knight to c3, bishop to b4, pinning the knight to the king, e3, uh, adding support in the center, and now d5, striking in the center for Capablanca. We have a3, forcing the bishop to make a decision. The bishop decides to capture on c3. B takes on c3, doubling up the pawns, although they won't be doubled up for long, and now c5, uh, striking once again in the center. C takes on d5, e takes on d5, uh, and now uh, Bafanik's pawns are, uh, pawn structure is totally fine, um, and he puts the bishop on d3, and this is a wonderful bishop sitting at the intersection of these two very powerful diagonals. Uh, Capablanca castles kingside. We have knight to e2, b6, and kingside castle by Bafanik. And now bishop to a6. Uh, really, uh, Capablanca doesn't want to leave this very powerful light squared bishop on d3, so he challenges it with bishop to a6, and Bafanik uh, happily trades on a6, uh, forcing knight to a6. And now this is a little bit of an awkward square for the knight. The knight can't come to b4 because obviously the pawns are guarding it. Um, so Bavanik is happy to give up his powerful light squared bishop on d3 to force this knight into an awkward position. Um, and here Bavanik just fianchettos his dark squared bishop to b2. Um, we have queen to d7, a4, grabbing some space on the queen side, rook f to e8, queen to d3, uh, getting the queen off the back rank, c4, closing the position and forcing the queen back, and the queen does retreat to c2, and now knight to b8 by um, Capablanca. So Capablanca has this idea to sort of reroute the knight to some uh, useful squares, uh, but this is going to take a long time to develop. It's going to waste a lot of moves on the same piece, and Bafanek is going to take advantage of that and get his pieces sort of in formation to get a really powerful attack going. And that starts with rook a to e1, implicitly challenging this rook on the semi-open e file. Here we have knight to c6, so the second move uh, by the knight. Um, knight to g3 by uh, Bafanek, opening up, you know, this rook a bit more and preparing uh, some useful squares for this knight to land on and now knight to a5 by uh, capablanca and this was sort of where the engine uh, starts to really dislike capablanca's position here the engine wants knight to e4 putting the other knight on e4 and preventing uh, bafanik from playing e4 himself and preventing these pawns from sort of just marching down broadway marching up the board and wreaking havoc um, but instead capablanca makes the third consecutive um, knight move putting the knight on a5 and now uh, Bafanik plays f3, preparing this e4 move, and now preventing the knight from coming to e4 because the pawn obviously would capture. Uh, so Capablanca continues with his plan, puts the knight on b3, and this is certainly a nice knight. It's protected by the pawn, um, but it's just not... It's a nice knight to have, but it's not really influencing the game uh, to the degree that Capablanca requires it to, given his investment in just making four consecutive moves with one piece. Um, this knight is controlling a lot of squares, but they're not really important squares in the position because Bafanik's king is castled on the other side of the board, um, castled king side. So uh, you are blocking the white queen from defending this pawn on a4, and you can capture this pawn and make a past a pawn of your own, um, but... It's going to be too slow, basically, for, for Bafanik's attack that's coming, and that's sort of, um, you know, this long journey of the night, while admirable, unfortunately, is not going to be fast enough to uh, repel uh, Bafanik's attack. So that attack begins with e4, the exact move we were talking about that you want to prevent if you had a knight sitting on e4. So e4, um, now queen takes on a4. Uh, Capablanca goes up a pawn, but, uh, you know, even though he has this pass pawn on, on uh, a7, it's not going to matter, as we will see, um, because Bafanik has e5 now, attacking the knight on f6. The knight moves to d7, queen to f2, getting behind the f3 pawn, and now g6, uh, adding a little bit um, of defense on the uh, these uh, important light squares. Uh, we have f4, uh, f5, preventing Bafanik from playing f5, but now Bafanik just takes en passant, he takes on f6, opening up the e-file, um, and really just disrupting the defense of Capablanca's king. We have knight takes on f6, um, f5 now uh, by uh, by Bafanik, really uh, offering Capablanca to take 
on um, f5, but this isn't a great idea because then queen takes and there's just not a lot of defense here uh, for Capablanca's king. Um, so instead we have rook takes on e1, rook takes back on e1, and rook to e8 by Capablanca. Capablanca would love to trade off all these pieces, sort of stymie the attack, and just make use of this past a pawn um, and the queen and knight in the vicinity. Um, but of course, uh, Botfinick has no interest in doing that. Instead, Botfinick plays rook to e6, attacking this undefended knight on f6. And here, Capablanca is sort of forced to make the trade um, because this knight just doesn't have uh, many, well, the best move here is is to to trade this very active rook on the sixth rank, which is exactly what um, Capablanca does. But now we have f takes on e6, and now uh, we talked about all these uh, sort of useful dynamic pawns. These dynamic pawns have produced a very important passed pawn on the e6 square, just two moves away from promoting, and you've also opened up a discovered attack from the queen to the knight on f6, and this knight is undefended. So after all is said and done, you have a passed pawn on e6, you have a knight that's undefended, um, that's that's sort of hanging and, and under attack from the queen. Um, and these two pieces uh, of Capablanca's, while very advanced on the fourth and third rank, um, are not doing a good job defending what needs to be defended, uh, Capablanca's king. So here uh, the, we have king to e7, sorry, king to g7 by Capablanca, defending the knight, which is under attack from the queen, but now queen to f4, threatening to bring the queen to c7 and deliver some nasty checks, getting in behind the position and maybe uh, promoting the pawn along the way. So here, uh, Capablanca doesn't do that. I don't know why he keeps doing that. Sorry, I, I, I'm like adjusting to the new like uh, lines feature. So uh, here he plays queen to e8 instead, uh, getting the queen back um, in defense, uh, now trying to guard this sort of second rank, also attacking the e6 pawn, which is currently undefended. Capablanca would obviously love to remove this pawn from the board, um, but Botvinnik, of course, defends it with queen to e5, defending the pawn and pinning the knight to the king, which will be important in just a moment. So here we have queen to e7 by Capablanca, defending this, e this c7 square, so now the queen can no longer come to c7 with check. Um, and it looks like this is a pretty solid defensive position. It looks like Capablanca can resist this uh, powerful pass pawn and use his pass pawn of his own and sort of make a breakthrough on the queen side. But Bofinik has a move here that just solves that problem. Uh, so see if you can find, I'll pause for a moment and see if you can find uh, Bofinik's move while I give you a couple of seconds. Okay, so the idea here is you would love to get this queen on e7 away from the e7 square. This queen is a wonderful defensive piece. It prevents the pawn from moving forward. It prevents the white queen from getting to c7. Um, it's doing a lot of important defending. Uh, you don't want that to happen if you're playing with the white pieces. And here Botvinnik realizes that and plays bishop. Oof, sorry, sorry I, I, the lines feature messed me up again. That was very anticlimactic. He actually plays bishop to a3. Um, so obviously attacking this queen on e7, forcing the queen to move away from e7, but there's nothing saying that the queen cannot capture the bishop back because the bishop is completely undefended. This is what's called a deflection sacrifice. At least I think that's what it's called. That's what I've heard it called. Uh, you know, sacrificing a piece, but forcing um, your opponent's piece to move away from a very important square. And here there's you know, you pretty much have to accept the sacrifice. If you play something like queen to e8, then you get uh, the white queen to c7 because the black queen is no longer defending c7. This obviously comes with check. At, and after king to g8, then uh, bishop to e7, and this knight is going to fall, um, and you'll be down a piece and we'll lose the game. So you have to accept the sacrifice here. That's what Capablanca does. Queen takes on a3, but now Bofinik has the second of two incredible moves. So I'll pause again and see if you can find this move while I give you a couple of seconds. Okay, so you've gotten rid of this queen on e7, which is a great defensive piece. Another great defensive piece in this position is the pawn on g6, clogging up this g-file, and Botvinnik gets rid of that with knight to h5 check. Um, this is a wonderful move because it comes with the threat of a double attack of the black knight on f6. So, for example, if the king tries to move away, the king can't move to um, f7 because the pawn is guarding it, so the king moves away to h8, then just queen takes... Um, and then checkmate in a couple of moves, and that's not gonna work so well. Um, if you try to go to h6, then just knight takes knight on f6, and now um, you have a passed pawn, and, and this will be totally fine for Botvinnik as well. So here, uh, you pretty much have to accept the sacrifice of pawn taking on h5. Oh, sorry. Pawn takes on h5, which is what happened. Um, so two consecutive moves, two deflection sacrifices of minor pieces for Botvinnik, getting the queen away from e7, getting the pawn away from g6, and now Botvinnik unleashes the whole idea behind these sacrifices with queen to g5 check. 
Um, now there's no pawn on g6 to block this check. Uh, the king can't move to f7 because the pawn is guarding. Um, so here the king retreats to g8, but now queen takes on f6, uh, takes the knight on f6, winning back one of the pieces. And obviously with a passed pawn and a queen, this is very, very difficult to um, avoid getting checkmated. Capablanca is going to try. He plays uh, king to g8, but now e7 by Bafanik. And now Bafanik is one move away from promoting to either a rook or a queen, and this would uh, lead to checkmate uh, in the next move. So um, there's not really a good way to prevent this pawn from being promoted. So here, Capablanca just tries a couple of checks. Queen to c1 check, uh, king to f2, queen to c2 check, king to g3, king to d, queen to d3 check. I'm not going to say it because it's a tongue twister, but you can sort of see the queen checking the king and the king walking up the board. Um, but after this move, uh, uh, Botfinick played king takes on h5, and in this position, Capablanca resigned the game because he saw where this ending was going, and it wasn't pretty. The whole idea here is that there are not many good squares that this black queen can 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 can, 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 continue, sorry, can continue delivering checks from because all of these squares are taken away um, by Botfinick's pieces. So here you have to play queen to e2 with check, um, king to h4, queen to e4 check, but now g4 blocking this check. Uh, queen to e1 check, king to h5, and now there truly are no more checks that you can play. So after something like h6, you get queen to g6 with check, uh, king to h8, and now promoting the pawn to a queen on e8, forking the enemy queen, forcing the queen trade, and now after king to g7, it's just a couple of moves to checkmate. Queen to e7 check, king to h8, king to h6, uh, king takes on h6 with check, and now no matter what you play, so you play b5, uh, queen to g7 with the king protecting is the final checkmate. So it didn't get to this position because, of course, Capablanca saw this. After the king takes on h5, there are no more useful, well, there's a couple more useful checks, but they're just delaying the inevitable, and uh, the game uh, was over. So um, an incredible game. Uh, obviously, really cool consecutive deflection sacrifices for Bafanik, um, making great use of this passed pawn and this queen, and even the king joining in on the attack. Um, and just a phenomenal final game between these two uh, titans of chess history. So thanks so much for watching. Drop a like, drop subscribe. Let me know of other games you'd like me to review, and we'll see you next time.